Hello again. This is Thursday and I'm reading from Luke 22 verses 7 to 20. Now this is only a short reflection. It's not a service of communion. We'll celebrate that together in the church centre soon enough. But if you have some bread and something to drink, you might want to join me towards the end of the reading in remembering that day in the upper room in Jerusalem. So now to our reading. Then came the day of unleavened bread on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. So Jesus sent Peter and John saying, go and prepare the Passover for us that we may eat it. They said to him, where will you have us prepare it? He said to them, behold, when you have entered the city, a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him into the house that he enters and tell the master of the house. The teacher says to you, where is the guest room that I may eat the Passover with my disciples? and he'll show you a large upper room furnished. Prepare it there. And they went and found it, just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. And when the hour came, he reclined at table and the apostles with him. And he said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it unless it's fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he said, Take this and divide it amongst yourselves. For I tell you that from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. likewise the cup after they have eaten saying this cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood amen and thanks be to god Jesus celebrated the Passover with his disciples on a few occasions, I'm sure, but it was different this time. This time Jesus, Jesus spoke of the suffering while he breaks bread and shares wine, each time referring to his broken body. And he asks his disciples to do as he did in remembrance of me. And we still celebrate the Lord's Supper now, just as we've done very, very informally here today. We remember everything he went through so that we can be saved by him. But let's think about Passover for a minute. The story of Passover relates back to the time of Moses and let's be honest it doesn't make comfortable reading. Exodus 12:12. 12, 12, it is the Lord's Passover. I will pass through the land of Egypt that night and I will strike all of the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. We don't like to think that God, the God we love and worship and serve, would do something like that, do we? It's uncomfortable reading because when we think about it, we probably think of the Egyptians as innocent. Certainly their children were, and they were just they were caught in the crossfire of a conflict between God and Pharaoh. Truth is though, no one's really innocent, are they? When we look at this awful moment in history symbolically, if we recognise that one of the things it's saying to us is that God looks after those who look to him, then maybe we can deal with it better. And the wonderful good news is that God's mercy, his compassion, well, it's just as real as the Old Testament anger that he showed against the Egyptians. So as Jesus and his disciples celebrated Passover, as they remembered how God, in his mercy, made a way for the Israelites to survive the, the awful events that night, God is making a way for the rest of us to survive the price we really should be paying for everything we do that makes him unhappy with us. The Israelites, they were covered by lamb's blood, painted around the doors of their homes, 
What was true then is true now. Think about the symbolism. Unless we're covered by the blood of the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, then we suffer the same fate as the Egyptians. Jesus knew that. He knew that without the shedding of blood there was no forgiveness of sin. He knew what was going to happen and he knew why. That's why he didn't resist arrest. That's why he didn't protest his innocence. That's why he didn't answer the accusations put to him. That's why he allowed himself to be beaten and tortured and mocked. That's the reason he came. And tomorrow, tomorrow is the day when we talk about that.